everybody. Welcome to the Pocono International Speedway here in Pocono, Pennsylvania, the home state of Kev Shear, who is a bitch and therefore will not be mentioned anymore in this race ever. Anyways, I am here with Seth Cole and James Qualls as they have made their way up into the commentaries booth up here at the new new Pocono. Guys, gentlemen, thank you for joining me. What do you guys think? It's a new Pocono. What what do you expect to see? Expect to see some great racing. And uh, by the way, to add on to your comment, in before Kev Shearer does actually does well in this event. <laughs> Unfortunately, he does have at least one win in my series so far. A luck win at Talladega. But anyway, Seth, what about you? What do you expect to see at this new Pocono? Well, I mean, I think this is going to be really an interesting race. Pocono is not necessarily one of the easiest tracks to get around and not one of the easiest tracks to make passes at either. Usually, you see a lot of the passes take place down in the heavy braking zone area of the final corner, turn three. And, uh, of course, these drivers are also going to have to watch out for turn four because I think that's going to be a dangerous corner here today. Wait a minute, there is no turn four at Pocono. That's why, that's why it's going to be a dangerous corner because if they go to turn four, they're in trouble. Yep. Cars rolling off the grid. Levi McIntyre and Austin LaPlante on the front row. The mac and cheese is lost in a plant? Is that what you said? <laughs> oh, good lord. <laughs> right, yeah, <laughs> totally. As you see these cars coming through the turn, see the track? A little more wider. A lot of the glue, you know, a lot of the grip that was once on this track starting to kind of go away a little bit. Uh, and with, a, with the whitening of, of, a, of, a, of a surface like this, what you, you know it's a new surface when it's, when it's pitch black because it has all the grooves and stuff in, into the asphalt. But when the asphalt starts getting white like this, all those, that grip and stuff is, is going away. And with that being said, with the lengthy straightaways they've got here, these drivers are going to be carrying an awful lot of speed down to the corner and with very little grip to be able to kind of get your car into the corner and very little banking in these corners as well. We're going to see probably a lot of slipping and sliding going on here. I mean, these drivers may have some pretty stable cars underneath them, but uh, they may look like they've got their hands full just due to the track conditions. That's very and possible. To, and, give you an, and to give you an idea, that, of course, these straightaways on this track, that you got the long front straightaway, it's just, it's just 3,055 feet in length, and you got the, well, the longest, they got the longest front straightaway in the, in the it's not a trial at 3,740 feet at Pocono, and of course, then you got the North shoot at 1780. So, three different tracks, three, three different straight shows, and three different turns at Pocono. That's what's going to make this, that's why they call this the tricky triangle. Yep, three different corners, three different straightaways coming off of turn number three. The pace car ducks to the inside, coming to the Geico restart zone. The green flag is out. We're underway here at Pocono. And of course, last week's race in Michigan went green flag to checkered flag with no cautions in between. Pocono usually can favor one of two types of races, either a wreck fest or a long green flag race as well. So we'll have to see what side of the spectrum it fits on today. Very possible. Mm -hmm. Levi, Levi McIntyre gets out with the race lead as they head down the, the, the second longest straightaway of Pocono. Smart move there by LaPlante to let off, let the six by, and then slot in front of Seth Cole into the second position, because normally even when there's rubber laid down, that outside line isn't really the fastest way around the racetrack. No, but you do see a lot of people do tend to use it as you have a battle for second place. Here comes Seth Cole and Emmanuel Hartnett to the inside of off of LaPlante. And the one thing that you did, you never you never see it. Think about when it comes to Pocono. Yeah, they, you brought they, up the point of using the high side turn three. One thing you never think about at Pocono is that, is that the draft can play an effect too. Yeah, on some of these long straightaways, you get the draft as you come back up here. As you see Seth and possibly losing second place to Emmanuel Hartnett here. The plant ducks to the inside right in, right in front of Johnny Gardner now. And as they head into the turn, head into turn two here, it looks like the point is going to come up with the with the second place. Now, uh, high side, that usually the high side is the best place to go in turn three here, mostly because you're able to then carry a little bit more speed in the entry of the corner, cut the car way down, and get a nice exit. You want to use the low line. 
Yeah, definitely. I, I would definitely agree to that. Here come Partnet, who was looking maybe for the lead there. You saw the draft on the front straightaway able to bring him all the way up to almost the best bumper of the six of Levi McIntyre. And you wouldn't think it either, but, you know, a lot of drivers have, say, have stated that this is not only a speedway, but the way that you take these corners, they similarize it to a road course. So a lot of drivers that we mm -hmm. usually see as the favorites at tracks like Sonoma, Watkins Glen, I mean, we could probably be looking at some of them to be making their way to the front here during the course of this race. Is Hartnett's going to go for the lead? It's very possible. Hartnett going to take the lead through turn three and come off of turn number three. He's going to have the lead. He's going to lead probably one of his first laps of the season. Here and at smart Pokemon. move. And smart move by McIntyre. He realized it was early in the race, so he just backed off and, 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 th and thought just go for it late in the race if he's up in the same position again. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, coming into this race, we've got two drivers now that have got two wins, Dylan Young and Charles Sanford, of course, getting his second win last week at Michigan. you got to wonder, you know, with the way this is looking, this is looking like it's settling into a long green flag run, so we may be on the uh, green flag pit stop strategy aspect of this race. And you got to wonder if maybe someone like Sanford, like Dylan Young, might be willing to roll the dice, go outside the box of everyone else's strategy to maybe try and pick up win number three because to be perfectly honest with two wins in the bank they can kind of afford to do something like that mm -hmm. yeah, it's slightly it's possible as you see joshua sakuli back here you see joshua sakuli back here he's our points leader coming down this the straightaway I'm back up through the field kyle matthews who after last week's fourth place finish moved himself out of last place in points but not by much well, Sakuli may be back in the field, but uh, let's not forget, he was back in the field at the start of the Michigan race, too, and was able to finish in the top 20. I think he was either 17th or 19th in the finishing results. So, you know, it, I don't think that we're going to see him at the back all day long. Yeah, he definitely got up there, that's for sure. Off of the turn here, Levi McIntyre still leading. New second place driver now. That's Johnny Gardner in the 12. And those Penske cars have been pretty fast this season. I heard some scraping, like somebody was scraping the wall back here. They're also three wide through turn three there with uh, Daniel Bouchard, Jessica Shelton. I think that was Dylan Pote down on the bottom. That's maybe one of the corners you don't want to try three wide, but somehow they made it work. Yeah, uh, uh, I didn't hear some scraping of the wall, so I think somebody's definitely been in the wall. And referring to what you said about turn three, Seth, uh, you know what they say, boldness can produce fruit. Well, it's here's, absolutely right. here's the battle for 10th place between Austin LaPlante, Dylan Young, and Kev Shearer. I thought you said you weren't going to mention him for the rest of the race. Yeah, well, unfortunately, he had a good qualifying spot, so I have no choice. <laughs> yeah, LaPlante running right now behind oh, his Hendrick teammate Cole Deaver in the 88. New second place driver now, that's Carson Gellman, the 19. His teammate, Emmanuel Hartnett, trying to slide in behind him for third. Yeah, I think Hartnett, I think Hartnett must have uh, messed up a corner or something, because he was out in front, and then we looked back, and he was back and forth. McIntyre, Gum, and Gardner had all gotten around him. Now he's making his way back. I mean, it, like I said, and like you stated, there's very little rubber that was laid down here, so there's not a whole lot of grip. You mess up a corner, it's going to cost you a number of positions, and it's going to cost you some space on track as well. Question is, is, does anybody have a chance at Levi McIntyre? I mean, he's he's up here in the second, or in the, leading this race. I meant, oh, I almost said second. Wow, because maybe I'm using him <laughs> being on the 19 for some reason. But uh, Levi well, it's only it's only lap seven. Why why do you want a chance at Levi McIntyre right now? I mean, this is an opportunity to ride in his wake, get the draft, and maybe save some fuel. Uh, I mean, here he goes, Emmanuel Hartnett to the inside. Will his teammate go with him, or is he going to stay in the middle? Actually, that's Carson Gum to the inside, but... What did I say? You said Emmanuel Hartnett. He's in third. Yeah, he is. Here comes the Carsonist. Oh. Yeah, Carson Gum. He made it stick to the inside. He made it stick to the inside of, uh... Of the six car, but the battle's not over. No, the 20 is giving draft up on the top side to the six, and you see Jake Smith in the 62 way far back there, not close enough to offer oh, draft. Oh, 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 my goodness! Oh, and you talked about caution. Oh, my God! 
Shane Lake in it. Oh, there's Trey Wright. Oh my God, they're still wrecking. Oh, and they're still wrecking. Oh, oh my, my goodness, God. there's another car flipping. That's, that's Elijah Gordon. Ooh, the 95, up oh, last week's winner, Charles Sanford. Boy, when this happened, <laughs> Kyle Matthews. Benjamin Miles. Oh my goodness. Caution is out for the first time here at Pocono, as you see. 37 of Shane Lake, the damage to his car, smoke coming out of it. And this is just and talking, Trent Dunham. And talking like Kurt Busch on the radio. Trent Dunham, the only Dodge in the Budweiser All Pro Series field, was involved in it. Heavy rear end damage. Yeah, I saw some other guys back there through the smoke. I think I saw Daniel Bouchard all crunched up on the front. 17 was involved. 30, 32 has trouble on the rear. 42 was at the very back of the pack. He'd have thought he'd have an opportunity to slow down, but I think he's got damage. Boy, I mean, you wouldn't think it here. This track looks so spacious, but when they start wrecking, that track closes up very quickly. All right. So uh, Carson Gum leading his teammate in second. We're going to go back and take a look and see what happened to bring out the first caution of the day here. At Pocono. Alright, we're here taking a look at what happened to bring out the caution. You see Tony Green slowed out and Johnny Gardner. I don't know if he just didn't get the memo. Or if he just tried to dive it into turn two. But he went in and got right into the back bumper of the 62. <laughs> that has all the looks to me of brakes failing on the 12 car. I mean... Yeah. He drove, it in, he drove it in deep, and then it looked like he tried to get on the brakes, and the car just never turned. It just went straight. At 37 is where he got his damage. Comes back down right into, I don't know how Zorline missed it, but uh, there's the 34. Oh, man, Trey Wright. Good Lord. And William Brock in the 10 right. got a piece of it. Right there in the 10. We're looking to look at the... Uh, Oh, look, the five car did get a bit of it right there. It goes, he slapped the inside wall. Wow. The Elijah 90, Gordon. Oh, the 95. Oh, and look at the 66 slide through that. Josh Drake, nice avoidance. And look at that. Oh, so he leader. might have gotten a little bit of right front, but I think the points leader might have sneaked through. No, the points leader got it. I see him back there. He's involved. James Qualls gets through. O'Neill Baldwin sneaks through. No, Alexander I didn't. Rowe. I got a piece of it. I got a piece of it. I didn't get through it. Cody Lamas, you see Cody Lamas in the 22 back there. Just the whole track yep. closed up. You mentioned Sanford. There's Bouchard up on the top of the track. I think he ran into the upside down Tony Green. That's the 10 of William Brock that the 9 car was on right there. Kyle yeah, Matthews the 10 of William, involved. William Brock, I think, clobbered uh, Shane Lake. Andrew Davis in the 14. I see him stuck between a couple of cars there. The 21, Nathan Hudson. Nine car was in it. Okay. Ninety four, I think, was in it too. The forty two, the eleven. Yeah, I thought I thought the forty two was involved. I thought I thought he didn't slow down in time, but it looks like he just came to a stop to avoid everybody. He might be okay. I did see him scraping the inside safer barrier uh, when the wreck was, you know, when every all the cars were clearing. But he might be okay. Well. And that's what happened to bring out the caution. Car got turned in the front of the pack. It creates a big melee. We're going to go back up for the restart, and we're going to see who exactly is left, who is out, and who is leading when we, come, when we go back green. Getting ready to go back green flag racing just shy of halfway. We are on lap 12 of 40. I'm not sure if anybody made pit stops under that under that last caution or under this caution or not, but Paul Minnick is one lap down after being on pit road to repair some of his damage. Carson Gum leading, Emmanuel Hartnett second, Johnny Gardner third, Levi McIntyre fourth, Dylan Poteet fifth, Cole Deaver in sixth, Seth Cole seventh, Kev Shear in eighth, James Qualls ninth, and Ace Garcia rounds out the top ten. So if for for. I'm not sure if these cars pit under this caution or not, to be honest, because they all look to be about the same spot you'd, you'd expect. As the green flag is back out, we're back underway here at Pocono. You see Paul Minnick kind of just moved down a little bit out of the way. He's, apparently he's really slow. 
And here comes the rest and of we got a lot of drivers out of the race and a lot of drivers that are damaged oh, all yeah, the way through this field as well. I, I want to point out. And we too, also had a driver. Yeah. I want to point out that under the caution flag, as we were getting ready to come back green, Dylan Young in the two somehow blew up, blew a piston or something, and he is now retired out of this race. He did what in his cup? <laughs> <laughs> Funny. <laughs> Johnny Gardner makes the move to second. Levi I'll be here all week. Yeah, and you're right with, with the fact that we don't know for certain if these drivers came to pit road or not. We don't know what the fuel window is here. So they, if they didn't come to pit road, they might have saved a little bit. But even if they did that, I mean, the question is, we're not even halfway. If they come to pit road, let's say before lap 20, does that mean they're good to go the rest of this race on fuel, or will they have to come to pit road again? I mean, th this we caution threw a monkey wrench into our knowing really what the fuel window is and just how far these drivers can go. Looking on back here, last year came across the line in 10th place. Jessica Shelton had a second place run last week at Michigan. Here she is now behind Qualls in the top 10. And right behind her is her good friend Cole Deaver. And Joshua Fikuli, look, he, he made it through the wreck. He, 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 I think he did get a bit of it, but he, it's not hindering him at all. Here he is, another trying to get another... Yeah, he's got run. a little bit of right side oh, damage, but I don't think that's really affecting him very much. You see Ace Garcia dive it off into turn three like that? It's pretty pretty much if you, if you got a car that can stick, you can do that. Um, you got to make sure you get back to the throttle soon enough off the exit to continue that momentum. But New race that, like leader. I said, that's one of the prime passing zones here. New race leader, Johnny Gardner in the 12. Well, Johnny Gardner being out in front doesn't necessarily have to worry about his brakes failing on him and taking out another race car because there's nobody ahead of him to take out. So oh, probably Carson. the best place for him to be right Ooh, now. Oh, Carson got he tried to dive it off in the turn two. <laughs> Johnny was pretty optimistic there and happy hour that he thought he thinks he got he's got a car that can win it. Here's somebody Specifically, who hasn't won a, a Budweiser All Pro Series race in a good while, in a good long while, is Dylan Cote in the 31. I don't even. Uh, think correct he... me if I'm wrong, but I think Poti finished 41st last week at Michigan off the lead lap. So uh, it's not exactly been a uh, great last couple of weeks for him. I think that dropped him out of the top 10 in points as well. So trying to mount a bit of a comeback here and running in the top five here at Pocono. Yep, speaking of top five, look who's in fifth. Ugh. Uh, I don't see anybody. Oh, yeah, it's, it's Jess. Huh, Jess is in that fifth place. It's Martin Truex Jr. Martin Truex Jr. is driving the All Pro Series. <laughs> yep, he took a step down from the Three wide back there. Series. Three wide oh, back boy. there. Josh Drake, James Qualls, Emmanuel Hartnett as they came out of, I think that was what, turn two? Yep, turn two and a turn three here. They settle it down though. As we have Levi McIntyre battling for second place. Here's the car I'm impressed with. Do you see him back there? He may be falling back from the pack a little bit, but that one of Trent Dunham has some rear end damage and still somehow managing to energy to keep a top twenty a top twenty place. Tell you a couple of other drivers I'm impressed with right now. We haven't talked about a couple of blue ovals back there just outside of the top ten. How about the forty one of Patrick Smith? And the 38 of Carter Friesen. I mean, both of them made their way through that wreck. And the both of them right now running very well. Indeed. Yeah, that's true. The 41 back here. 38, Carter Friesen. Oh, God. Oh, God. Running back here a little bit. Trying to work away. Look at the 96 car once again. Just dives it into turn three. And he comes oh, yeah. in. He's making it work. So, I mean, he obviously he doesn't have track position right now, but if he could get himself up there, get himself a caution or something, get up there, I mean, that 96 might be one of the strongest cars in the field. Does it change for the lead? Carson Gum goes back to the lead. Levi McIntyre looking to clear Poti for second. Poti trying to get second place. Nope, he's going to fall back. I thought, Kev, I thought Kev Shear was going to go three wide there and put Poteet in the middle going into one for a moment. Yeah, I mean, it would, it, it would definitely be a Kev Shear thing to do. It, it would, yes. 
<laughs> well, you know, we all know how much we all know how much he wants to win it from this Pennsylvania crowd. Well, how about the representation of manufacturers up here? Two Chevys, two Fords, two Toyotas in the top six. Yeah, absolutely. And then there's Trent Dunham in the Dodge, so all the way back. There. Yes. <laughs> Lest we forget. Looking back, back here. The 19 car still leading. Yeah, I think Trent and his damage might have been slowing up a couple of cars back there. Alexander Rowe and Kyle Langland trying to get around him. So if they can clear him and they continue racing up here from uh, Carson Gum back to Carter Freeze, and maybe, just maybe, Langland and Rowe can catch up to this and lead group. Shelton gets around the 78 of Shearer, now moves into the fourth place. We saw Josh Drake go all the way down to the very bottom of the racetrack to avoid the big wreck. Yep. Oh, here comes the car to pit lane. Here comes, we're coming to pit lane, and it's going to be on lap 20. 19 coming to 20. And look at Charles Sanfer, last week's winner. So pit stops are starting here at Pocono. They can make it about halfway, so Ooh. this could put them in a, this could be a, this could very well be a fuel strategy race, right, right, gentlemen? Mm-hmm. That last lap, that last couple laps ought to be pretty, uh, let's just say, edge your seat. Yeah. Nineteen car out of pit road first, followed by the ninety-four. But we're going to go ahead and come back here, as I think the rest of these cars are now coming down pit lane. <laughs> down pit road they come. I'm guessing Steph Cole had to step out of the booth real quick. But um. And Norman's got the hiccups. <laughs> Just a little bit. McIntyre, who had the pole, he's pulled into his number one pit stall here. Let's see what the strategy's going to be. Probably four tires, two cans of gas. There's the 19. Go, 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 go. McIntyre, done with his stop, comes off of pit road. Question is, will he be able to be up to speed in time for the 19? Probably not. As the 19 is going to go right around him on the outside line here. McIntyre, though, going to cycle around in the second position, it seems. As Carson Gum in the 19 takes the lead after the round of pit stops is over. Carson looks to be in pretty good position. Shelton getting a spot up to third place. Dylan Poteet still back here. The 47 points leader, Joshua Sakuli. He, he definitely improved on his pit stop. He was last in the 20th place. And here he is back here, Carter Friesen. Carter Friesen on, a, on a, the 978 car. Here comes Jessica Shelton on underneath Levi McIntyre. We, are, we have nine, about 18 laps to go. Oh, Kev, do not make it three wide. Please do not make it three wide. He's going to make it three wide. It looked like it was, well, but he made maybe it not. back off. Cars are a Brit, a, a Brit, a bit sped, blah, blah, blah. The cars English are, man, do you speak these, it? These cars <laughs> are a bit spread out. Now, as you see the, as you see the 19 car with about a 1.3 second lead last time by Shelton trying to work with Levi. Can these guys run them down? If they stay single file, they can. There's no doubt about that. But don't, don't I mean, that, don't tell that to you get a run on somebody, and you, yeah, exactly. You get a run on somebody, and you want to keep that momentum going. So you're going to step out of line four position. Now, the one question I've got here, I mean, we mentioned this before. The drivers may have been able to save a little bit of fuel 
under that caution that we had. But they all came to pit road somewhere between laps 19 to 21. Mm -hmm. Can they make it the rest of the distance on fuel, or is that as far as they can go? If that's the case, some drivers could be somewhere between one to a one and a half lap short if they that's came what, to pit road early. That's why I said, you know, this, la this, this last two or three laps, it's going to be edge of your seat, though. So who's going to make it? Who's not going to make it? depends on what lap you pitted, too. Absolutely. I'm, but look I, mean, at I, would, I would look at who... I would look at whoever pitted with Levi McIntyre in that second group to probably be able to make it, but I would question those drivers that were the first group that came down pit road. Look at this, Seth. You talked about him earlier having a good run. Here he is now in the fourth position. Carter Friesen in the 38th. I mean, I mean, Carter Friesen had a great run at Michigan last week, too. I mean, this has been a very consistent rookie season for him. I don't think we're too far out of seeing him maybe go to victory lane. He has been really strong. His team has been really smart in their pit strategy. It was pit strategy that got him a good finish last week as well, and now he's up in the top five. And like I said before at the beginning of the race, too, not to count out the 47, our points leader, Joshua Sakuli, he's up here in the top ten, too. So two drivers in particular last couple of weeks that have been really, really good in terms of their pit strategy. Battle for the lead. Here we go. Levi McIntyre takes the lead away from the 19 of Carson Gum, and here comes the 38 car and the 94 to go around as well. I'd be watching the 38 and 94 car, so I think those are your fastest cars out there right now. Dylan Pote back there trying to get a spot on Kev Shearer. Well, I also think that Levi McIntyre really showed the speed of his race car because he didn't really have anyone behind him, and he was able to just use the slingshot, the draft off the 19, to reel Carson Gum in and get by him. So, you know, all by himself, that six car is a very strong piece. But what happens, er but what happened earlier doesn't has no bearing because it depends on what adjustments you made on the pit stop too. Good point. Just a bit to throw, just to throw this out there, guys. Next week, the Budweiser All Pro Series goes to yet another road course at Road America. So, with Pocono this week, Road America next week, it's definitely going to be at least some shifting training down as Carter Friesen takes the lead in that number 38 car off of turn three. So it's kind of interesting. You look at the last, our, our last week, this week, next week. You go to you went to a speedway where it comes down to fuel strategy. You come here to a speedway with fuel strategy and road course like terms, and then you go to next week at a road course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the week after that, we go back to Daytona. Yes. Talk about it all coming going full circle. So look at this. We got two now we got Fords, the top four here. Two Fords, a Toyota, and two Chevys. Yeah, but I wouldn't count out maybe this being a seven-car pack in a few minutes because Dylan Pote is starting to reel in the top four, and you've also got Kev Shear and Josh Drake lined up there, sixth and seventh. They might be able to produce enough speed to get up here as well. Battle for second place, Levi and Carson Gum. Here comes Pote underneath Shelton trying to get the fourth spot. Yeah, Levi looked really tight off turn two. He kind of backed up the rest of the guys behind him. That's why Carson stepped out of line. So I don't know if maybe Levi had his car set up for like the short run, like you alluded to, Walls, or with the adjustments, or maybe he's just waiting for that race car to come in for the long run. I don't know which side of that it is. Boy, Dylan Pote yeah. sure didn't get a good run off that corner, but he's going to come up in front of Kev Shear, and Kev Shear's going to immediately duck to the inside and take a couple of cars with him. Well, remember I said a seven-car pack? How about a ten-car pack? LaPlante, Qualls, and Garcia have also caught up to this lead pack. we got a ten-driver fight for this uh, top spot, possibly. Oh, and Shelton dives it off into turn three to make the pass. Ace Speaking of diving, remember Ace Garcia was making those strong dive bomb moves into turn three. Now he's got track position up here in the tenth spot, so we may not have heard the last of his Toyota. Mm -mm. Look who's just outside the top 10 here. I think it's in 12th place. The 47 of Joshua Sakuli. Yep, right there with Gardner and Patrick Smith. And if they, can, if they continue to race at the tail end of this lead pack, the 12, 41, and 47 could very well catch up into this lead group. This is going to be like Talladega racing here in a minute. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, this is this is this I think is even more extreme than Talladega racing to be honest because I've these cars have been getting so much more of a run 
getting into the draft here than I've seen them actually do at Talladega. Usually at Talladega, if you have multiple cars lined up against one race car, they'll gain maybe two to three tenths a lap. Here, they've been gaining somewhere between uh -oh. a half a second to six tenths. And they're coming in for pit stops. Wow, okay, this is really interesting. So this tells me that we just entered into the fuel window of them being able to make it the rest of the way, and some of these guys are going to short pit. Yes, definitely. Short pitting with about 10 laps to go. Uh, and that's, and that's going to be kind of interesting because a lot of these drivers pit uh, between yeah. 19, 19 and 21, which is about not, which is between 11 to 9 laps to uh, 9 laps into this run. So you're talking about short pitting. Let's see if it'll pay off. We're watching Carter Friesen because he was the leader coming into the pit stop. Can Shelton get out of pit road ahead? Look at Shears. Shears is going to be probably the first one to come out of pit road. Oh my god, I swear to god if he wins this race. He won't because he pit because he pitted with more than 10 to go. Uh, bold statement there by Qualls. As look, no no nobody else comes down pit road. The 6 of Levi McIntyre stayed out once again. So he's not coming to pit road. I wonder what the idea was here for these drivers. So I guess we're going to go back to watch the six of McIntyre. And Kev, if you're watching this, I'm sorry for that statement. And uh, don't apologize. Yeah. No, don't apologize. Don't ever apologize when it comes to anything about Kev. <laughs> I just don't want to. I just don't. I just don't want to have any enemies there, Norman. <laughs> oh, trust me, he wants all the enemies he can get. Here comes oh. some of the. Here comes some of the rest of the cars down pit lane now. Oh, but the '96 car stayed out this time. <laughs> Ace Garcia drafting with some of the lap traffic here. Nine laps to go. Or excuse me, ten laps to go, actually. In the race here, I told you know, Ace Garcia leading this race in a bunch of lapped cars. Ace Garcia, this could work out well for Ace Garcia. All Ace Garcia would have to do is come down pit road, maybe take two tires and a can and a half of gas. And he'll be a, uh, and he'll be able to maybe retain the lead depending on what everybody else does. You see, he's on the inside line now. I do believe he will be coming to pit road this time by. I uh, yeah, I, be I believe Ace Garcia is in the catbird seat right now. It's very possible. Here he comes down pit lane. He's got to go 55 miles an hour down pit lane. He gets into his pit stall here. What's it gonna be? Two tires, it looks like, so far in that 96 car. It's going to be four tires and gas. Four tires and gas for the 96. Go, 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 go. And he's out of running down the pit lane here. As this looks like, well, this looks like the group that will be the leaders. Shelton making a move on Kev Shearer for second place. I really believe that if the N96 would have just taken two tires and a can of gas, probably would have been able to make it. <laughs> Carter Friesen leading, looking for possibly his second win of the season. Looking to be the, the third two-time winner this season. He got a win earlier this season. I forgot what, what track it was. But I know he did get a win earlier this season, which is why he was in the All-Star race. Coming through turns three. I uh, almost said turns three and four. But coming through turn three, Jessica Shelton has not won a race this season at all, looking to get herself in the chase. I tell you what, you got calculators going on in the pit area and, and crew chiefs biting their fingernails down to the quick. <laughs> Shelton really closing in on that 38 car as we got eight laps to go. Eight laps to go here at Pocano.
Shelton still closing in on Friesen. It's, she's really closing in on Friesen off of turn off of turn two. As she goes, she ducks to the inside of the 38 car and dives it off into the corner. And Jessica Shelton will take the race lead out of turn number three, coming to seven laps to go. This is what we mentioned earlier, though, using the draft on one of those straightaways. Now the question is, can she hold the lead away from Carter Friesen as Carter is beginning to close back up on her back bumper? She makes her car a little wide down the straightaway here. She's able to hold him off for now at least. Up, oh, Carter dove it down to the inside. He won't have her clear though. But he may have but he may have horsepower too. Yep, Carter Friesen retakes the lead with six left to go, and Kev Sear is going to get into this mix now. I think you heard your statement. I mean, you're not going to mention the rest of the race and got PO'd at you. Well, I, I can't, <laughs> yeah, probably. Jessica Shelton trying to clear up. They're coming up on the last car of Paul Minnick in the three. <laughs> Carter Friesen, he has had a good strong car in the second half of this race. He's trying so hard to keep the lead. He's just hoping that Kev Shear gets to the back bumper of the 94 and they start racing behind him. Five laps to go, Hannah yeah, Pocono. He also got to hope you got enough in the fuel tank too because these guys, I guess we're, coming up, we're about to come up on 10 laps since those guys pitted. That's true. We really are. We're going to have to see if they have enough gas. Down to turn two. 94 car unable to catch up to the back bumper of the 38 this time around. Run on the outside line. That, that, the three car is going to definitely provide a bit of a jab for the 38 car, even though he is running quite off the pace. It also depends on if he gets tra if he if he get trapped behind the black car or not. That is possible. Whew. Where are they going to encounter him, and will the three car just get out of the way? That's going to be the big time question. Thirty eight car ducks to the inside of the three. Oh, had to slow down and get off the gas a little bit there. Three car is just not going away. Thirty eight car trying. I think the caution is out. Caution is out. The yellow flag is out. I am not sure why. I don't see. I don't see anything. Could this be a random debris caution? The race is going to end under the caution flag as they're coming to three laps to go. And it's very possible that Carter Friesen has just won this race if he can coast around two more laps here at Pocono. Three more laps, sorry. And now we'll see who makes them feel under caution and who don't. <laughs> That's what's going to be the case here. Will they have enough fuel under the under this caution? I don't know what brought the caution flag out. I don't know if it was debris or if it was somebody else. I think there was a car up ahead of, a little bit ahead of freezing too, I think, out of the pace car. I, I want to see what happened. Could it be the 13? That's what I was thinking, if it was. Watch the pace car. <laughs> it was 
just a weird phantom caution. It was a weird phantom caution that brought out the caution that brought out the yellow and look at this! They're pinning! And so it begins. The top four cars are pinning and Josh Drake is gonna stay out. Oh my god. Josh Drake <laughs> takes the lead, and remember, he stayed out a lap or so after the other guys, but the person sitting in the catbird seat, like you said earlier, James, is that 96, Josh Drake, looking for his second win of the season. The three of Paul Minnick is one lap down. Actually, he's on the tail end of the lead lap, I think. No, he's one lap down. You know, I think, and I think I pinned to, I think I pinned to where I, to where I think I, to where I think I had to come in right when the checkered flag hits too. I think, because I, oh, I think I was on, because I think I was on, something I was on lap thirty, I think, or twenty nine. All right, let's see. All right, they're coming through turn, they're coming to turn three here. The question's gonna be is, will he, will they make the, will he, will the sixty six come down pit lane? He's not making an indication. Carter Friesen just ran out of gas as well as Jessica Shelton and the others. Caution flag was just not enough to help them save fuel as the 66 of Josh Drake takes the white and the yellow flag. We're going to go ahead and kind of speed up here. Okay, here we go. Off of turn number three for the final time here. Off for of the final time here at turn number three under the caution flag. It's going to be the 66 of Josh Drake. He is going to win the Exalta Pocono 400 at Pocono. Wow. <laughs> With the help of a nicely timed caution and the, and the cars above, uh, in front of them coming to pit lane, Josh Drake wins the race. Kind of what we said, though, with him. Kind of what we said with he and Ace Garcia, that, that pit strategy worked out for those two drivers because we went, they went mission the whole race, and look at them. That sure did, yep. As the race is complete, Josh Drake is going to go do his pit, his burnouts. We're going to take a look at that real quick and then come back for the results. All right, Josh Drake now in victory lane celebrating his win. Gonna go ahead and save the results here. It's not 500, 400. All right, Ace Garcia second, James Qualls third, Levi McIntyre fourth, Austin LaPlante fifth, Dylan Pochi sixth, Cole Deaver seventh, Seth Cole eighth, Johnny Gardner ninth, Kyle Langland tenth. And as we go back down here to see the rest of these cars are all out of the race, Shane Lake. And Dylan Young both had piston problems. Retired out of the race. Tough break for them. Charles Sanford limped home to a 30th, 30th place finish. And my oh my, these cars are about to come down pit road. Finishing 19th, 20th, 21st. They had a great run, but had to throw it all the way because of fuel strategy. You gotta definitely gotta feel for Carter Friesen, too, because I mean that he had looked like he had that race right in the bag, too. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining me. I'd like to thank James Qualls and Seth for joining me up here in the commentator's booth. It was quite a ride here in Michigan. Can't wait. Or I said Michigan. Here at Pocono. Can't <laughs> wait to do it again. Thank you guys once again so much for joining me. This has been a production of the NNSQRA, Offline Racing at its best. Until we meet again. Thank you, Marty Reed.